Hello, friend. Joe of the Office here. Do me a favor and hit the uh, subscribe button. Doesn't cost you a thing, but it sure helps me out a lot. Thanks. Okay. So today, I would like to discuss predictive analytics as applied to the COVID-19 coronavirus. So let's take a look at this uh, very detailed ArcGIS map created by the John Hopkins Coronavirus Research Center. This pane over here is going to talk about total confirmed cases of the coronavirus and then show a summary of by country of how many cases they have. So we can look all over. Of course, China has the majority. Um, the U.S. has 466. Now, this is of as of today when I'm filming or shooting this at one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, of course, the map here and it shows circles graduated from smaller to larger sizes based on the number of cases that we have. Uh, pretty cool. You can click on something and show the 15 uh, confirmed cases here in Russia. Three recovered, zero deaths. Um, some pretty neat information there. And then, tragically, of course, the uh, amount of total deaths and then deaths by uh, location. Uh, you can scroll down here and you can see uh, how many people we've lost. Uh, also, this pane talks about the total uh, number of recovered. So, 107,000 confirmed cases 60,000 of them have already recovered so that's a that's a, a positive and then there's a couple graphs down here that you could look at if you go on to their rgis.com uh, site and uh, it shows some uh, trending data in a chart here uh, it's logarithmic and then there's daily cases this uh, this chart right here is pretty neat because it it kind of tracks visually the new confirmed in red and the new recovered in green. So right now we're actually recovering <clears throat> faster than new cases are being confirmed. So that's some pretty neat uh, statistics there. This is a great page for you to research and look at if you're interested in this. Down here in the middle is, uh, of course, the, the credits about who put stuff together, where the data sources are. But right here, this uh, GitHub link here, um, that's what I'm interested in. So what I want to do is pull the underlying data sets for this map to use in our own predictive analytic research. So this link takes us to GitHub, and I'm over here in GitHub. And these three CSVs I'm interested in, I didn't uh, download them directly because you have to log in I believe so uh, I clicked on them and it showed me this here now I could just copy and paste this into Excel but not when you're copying from the internet data it doesn't always uh, it doesn't always come across great so I like to pull the raw data for these files and what I do is I just control a and control C and I copy this information um, into an Excel spreadsheet right here so it looks exactly the same of course and um, <clears throat> then I can take this text file and import it into access and that's what I did so um, I went through the process of uh, getting external data news source from file uh, text importing into or importing from my cases <clears throat> uh, document I have to do a couple things here um, because this data does have some uh, double qu quotation marks as text qualifier I have to input that there text qualifier so I hit advance go in here and change the text qualifier hit OK and then go in and uh, mark my first row contains headers uh, and then next next and you can you can uh, let access add a primary key doesn't really matter and then I added it as case uh, as a cases table so 
as we can look that raw data came in and it mapped everything perfectly into the fields the columns that we needed to <clears throat> so let's take a look at this data just for a second so we have a, a, pro, a province name which is um, you know may or may not be usable this is when breaking things down into lower categories than country so mainland china would be the country but it has all these provinces here so i don't really need all that uh, for the analytics i want to do i'd rather go by uh, country directly because it's easier for me to get population data uh, for later analytics by country than by province or country so the data shows uh, the region and then as of a certain date starting January 22nd how many cases or confirmed cases there have been uh, up until uh, yesterday or day before yesterday 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 37 so I'm shooting this on 38 as you can see so the main category there 67 thousand in the Hubei province of China uh, so what I want to do is instead of seeing this this uh, this province data oh let's go back just one second so I did the same process for the deaths uh, deaths table and the recovered uh, tables here so that you could see it and then I went ahead and built um, this query these queries based on grouping that data into country data so pretty simple just uh, brought in the cases table country and then the final date so I have the total here group by and sum and then uh, so it shows me the country and the total cases by country and uh, it's all nice and sorted here by country so then I can copy this into this the deaths and the recovered which all look exactly the same uh, except for they have the correct data uh, into my excel spreadsheet so um, this is what happened when i copied the t the first table in um, it's uh, it came out good i created a table out of it brought in the raw data created table but it's not exactly what i wanted and it's not useful for for this uh predictive analytics project that i want to do today but what was was bringing in these queries that i had built so the queries for confirmed cases the query for grouped all of the deaths together uh and the group for all of the recovered together so i brought these in and then of course summed them up so we have 105 as of yesterday 105,000, 3,500 deaths, and 58,000 recovered as of yesterday, not as of today. <clears throat> and, the, and the last part I did was I brought in the population. So the world population by country uh, as found on uh, a worldometer. So I just kind of copied this data in to, uh, well, first Excel. It came out like this, and this isn't exactly what I had wanted to use. Um, so I put it in access into a populations table, and I was able to sort by and look and change some names of some things and, and make it look really nice. And then I could use this data, which is going to have uh, some differences in naming conventions uh, to... I'll show you what I did here. I took the cases table and did a, 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 a join to the country of the populations table. So was that a left join? I don't know. Anyway, um, and then summed the population. Uh, so we could see that we got pretty much the whole table. I had to go in and physically add the Czech Republic those islands are spelled wrong. Macau is different. Mainland China is just China, you know. Uh, so I had some blanks here that I had to go in and fill in for um, for the Excel spreadsheet. So I did that Excel spreadsheet here. 
the countries match up exactly across the board here. Um, blah, 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 did that. Okay, so 331 million people in the United States. Anyway. So then I created this new column called Current Mortality. And what this does is it takes by country, uh, it divides the deaths by the confirmed cases. So if you get it, what's the likelihood or percentage that you might die from this per by country? So this is a, a point in time mortality rate. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll really get into why that's flawed in a minute. But uh, as you look down, uh, the countries that have deaths do provide us. We're just, you know, we created this, dragged it all the way down. And it shows us the mortality rate for each country. The Philippines is very high. 16% of the people who get it have died. And then <clears throat> I looked at uh, the, the current mortality rate global is this 3.361805. So that's the percentage of people that are likely to die or that have died that have uh, against confirmed cases. And in predictive analytics, um, you may just stop here and say, let's, uh, let's look at, um, you know, what the likelihood of how many people that are going to get this versus this mortality rate, how many people would die from it. So I did find, uh, an article, but a couple articles on, um, I, I saw some reporting on the news the other day about saying this that a huge percentage of the world you know 40 to 70 percent of the world may be affected by the coronavirus this year and why it's important that it's this year is because next year hopefully we'll have a vaccine in place so um, what could be the potential worst case scenario if this is uh, if this does come to fruition this 40 to 70 percent so I went ahead and did some predictive analytics out here. Uh, 40 to 70% of the world population. What if 40% were that? So this is 40% of the population. This is 70% of the global population. It, with, uh, we multiply that by the current mortality rate, and we could see 104 million deaths to 183 potential deaths this year. 183 million. Uh, so we don't really want to we're you know we all hope that that's not true and i, I kind of want to get into why um this predictive analytics is going to be it's not likely accurate based on the fact that we're missing so many variables in this predictive analytics exercise so <clears throat> i don't really have time to start doing all of this uh, variable correction to the predictive analytics. However, uh, let's think about a few of them. So, uh, what effect does uh, weather have on the virus? So, if the virus is spreading quickly when it's cold in most of these regions, uh, colder than normal, what happens when the temperature warms up in the region in these regions does the virus die that's what's being predicted right now but how does it affect the mortality rate how does it affect the uh, new confirmed case uh, rate in each of the countries that's a variable that you would have to take into account uh, if you are really doing a predictive analytic on the mortality rate and how it'll affect us globally so what effect does culture have on the virus so uh, a lot of the talk was done about uh, Italy, for example, because it spread pretty quick in Italy once they got their first case. Um, 5,883 people uh, did get the virus, but it was over a very quick basis uh, that they got it, and it was and it was deemed by their uh, president or prime uh, their leader that it was about. Uh, because their culture was very, you know, they kiss each other on the cheeks, they hug, embrace, there's a lot of touching. And so uh, culture had the effect to spread this virus more quickly than normal, uh, than a normal, a different country might have because of culture. So those things have to be taken into account. Um, 
Another thing is how policy, like individual country policy, will alter the possible outcomes over time. So, whereas um, uh, the United States put up some travel uh, restrictions pretty quickly at the beginning of this ordeal, how is that going to affect uh, the spread rate of this virus versus the European Union that has, uh, you know, free travel across borders? Um, uh, those are things that would have to be taken into account on how this would pr uh, possibly spread. Uh, treatments and vaccines. So how well are antivirus, you know, generic antivirus uh, medicines and, and, and you know, flu medication or cold medication, how are they affecting this virus? Are they, you know, you know shortening the length of time that somebody gets it, which means that there's, there's a shortened window for how they may pass that virus uh, from person to person. Um, and then vaccines, of course, hopefully we'll have a vaccine fully tested within the year so that we can start uh, eliminating uh, this virus over time or the outbreaks of it. And then the biggest thing I want to talk about for predictive analytics uh, is the importance of accurate reporting numbers. So in, in this scenario, the coronavirus, uh, for a, a, I think a large percentage of our population, are going to be either asymptomatic or have light symptoms uh, similar to that of just a normal cold or uh, flu. And they may not go to the doctor. They may not go and get, uh, you know, confirm that they have that. They may just stay at home or live out their life and not, uh, you know, over just overcome the illness. So they, they don't get sick enough. They don't die from it. They don't have to go to the hospital. They just, so it doesn't get reported. And when that, when that statistic does not get reported, when we don't get all the numbers of confirmed cases, then that mortality rate that we calculated is artificially high because, um, because we need, so we will obviously have more confirmed cases than are reported here. So when that is um, used to divide into the number of deaths uh, to gain the, the percentage of the mortality rate, um, these mortality rates would come way down if we knew the true number of actual cases in the world. So uh, based on that logic, pretty much that logic alone, we know that these numbers are unrealistic. They're inaccurate. They are not gonna, uh, we're not gonna experience these uh, potential deaths. So that's good news, but uh, we still need to do our best to wash our hands, uh, which will also have an impact on mortality rate and spread rate of, the, uh, of a virus. Wash our hands and be careful with contact with people. Make sure you call in, to, uh, you know, call in sick to work. If you are sick, you don't want to spread it. Don't want to take any uh, potential of getting other people sick, especially people with uh, conditions that may be conducive to them dying you know some pre-existing condition that uh is going to push them over the edge so oh i think that's it uh that should do it um or at least provide some insight into how predictive analytics work in the real world and can be applied using excel and access uh, if you have any questions or critiques, please leave a comment. If you want to discuss the virus and how it's affecting uh, the global everything, uh, leave a comment. Let's let's talk about it. Uh, if you hit, appreciate the this video, please hit subscribe and like. And uh, always thank you for watching.